Joe, let's start uh, this week's episode with that that unpredictable engine of chaos. That wheel of chaos just turns and turns. And of course, I'm talking about the weekly domestic box office returns. Margo, show me the money. Oh, mm, yes. Mm, wow, mm, wow. Mm, what mm, the mm. hell am I looking at, Joe? Bang. What is that number next to Inside Out 2? Brett, if unless my eyes deceive me, it's $154 million. What the hell? I didn't know a movie could make that much money. Well, it must be have been in the theaters for 100 weeks. That's got to be a typo. Yeah. We, oh, no, wait. It says, it says op- it's opening weekend? Week. This, is the, this is the opening the week. Fuck? It's $154 for million Inside United Out States two? dollars. Margo, are we sure this is in the U.S. dollars? This is... Margo's going to check on this, but th- I, I, this is, I, I think this is legit, Joe. We knew it was going to be a big Wait, weekend what? for Pixar. Uh, we didn't know it was going to be this big. $155 million. So I'm looking at this, bro. For Inside Out 2, $155 million opening weekend. Now, how what? how exactly how big of a deal is this? How do we contextualize an opening weekend of 155 million and Margo, you can come back to me because I'm about to freaking lay it out for these people. What this means, show some respect. This is the biggest opening of the year by a landslide. Dune two did uh 82 and a half million in its opening weekend. So Inside Out two nearly Jump doubled. Change. It nearly doubled the box office of the second biggest movie of the year. Second, this is the first movie since Barbie. Remember Barbie? Yes. That that oh that summer oh Barbenheimer. I this remember. is the first movie since year. Barbie mm-hmm. to open over a hundred million in its opening weekend. And third, and most importantly, this is the one that shocked me. This is the one that shocked me because the first two is just competing against other movies that are also in this era of box office slump. Number three, this is the second highest animated opening ever. Wow! After The Incredibles two, wow. ever. <laughs> and that's coming in in the midst of this historically bad summer box office that has everyone wondering, uh, you know, are summer blockbusters uh, a relic of the past? Do people still want to come out to the movies? And in the midst of all that anxiety and hand wringing, you have Bad Boys Four and Inside Out Two back to back. Wow, what a we were we were about ready to throw in the towel. We were getting so two, despondent. Two there. weeks ago, we were like, oh, the movies are dead. This has really been a learning lesson. This has been a week of learning for me because our, our behavior room, I'm a Philly sports fan. I grew up, I'm the Philly sports, or what am I, the Philly movie dog? The, the Philly movie freak. The Philly movie freak. Dog, how dare you? Um, Lay off my IP. I'm the Philly movie freak. I'm from Philly. We are, you know, when the Eagles win the game, they're going to the Super Bowl. When they lose the game, right. they're well, I don't I couldn't even look at them. Nobody I, runs I more hot mother, and cold. Right? Yeah, Nobody runs right. more hot and cold than a Philly right. sports and fan. That's this reminds me of that because we were back yeah. on Furiosa and oh, if yeah. we were I was just you know, it was, it, end it was times. done. It was end done. of days. The, the movie theaters were all going to shut down. Furiosa it, made under 30 opening weekend. We were like, pack it in. It was over. Yeah. Um, but that just reminds me like Look at these larger trends. We reviewed, Brett, this week, hundreds of, um, we didn't watch them, but we reviewed hundreds of movies because we're going to talk later about our top 10 box office movies ever. Some are blockbuster go- movies. Going ever. through this list, like in the Marvel heyday era, like nine, 10 years ago, yeah. sure, there were, you know, six, seven movies making this kind of money a year. Yeah. yeah. But acting like the sky's falling in is just, maybe that was just crazy. Now, it's not un. Like it's not it's it's earned craziness between the uh, COVID and the strikes and the Hollywood media freefall and streaming we, taking we're a chunk. primed for exactly yeah. for all those reasons we talk about we're primed to to feel bad about things but reviewing this list it's like it is hard to make this much money as a movie a hundred and fifteen million dollars opening weekend that mirrors exactly in the same month minions 155, did in, 155. wow. In the opening weekend, or that's no, the opening inside week. out too. Inside out too. 155. Oh, 155. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. Um, other other giant uh, animated movies that come out in June and July 
performed this well opening weekend. Not quite as well, but like it just reminded me that, okay, I bet this reminds me, uh, you know, of just a basketball every year. I bet 10 years ago we were like, summer box office is going to fall apart. Yep. And then Minions hit and everyone's like, oh, yeah, for like a big kids movie yep. in June and July. Like, I wonder if we're just where movies go through these cataclysms every five, 10 years, uh, as we'll talk about later when we look at the history of the summer blockbuster. It's not unusual. We're not living in the in the end of movies. We're living in in the. Uh, once a decade sort of lull where the movies have to recalibrate and figure out how to move forward. Um, but people still want to come out to the movies. Obviously. Streaming didn't kill that. COVID didn't kill that. Um, but let's dig in for a second more into this Inside Out 2 success story because this is still this is still huge by any, you know, you can explain it all you want. This is still was still pretty shocking. I, I did not know a movie could still do 155 opening weekend, uh, but it sure can. Uh, and this wasn't just a big win for the box office uh, as a whole. It was also a huge, much needed win for Disney and Pixar because uh, these are two brands who once upon a time were sh the surest of sure things at the box office. As sure as Marvel, as sure as anything. And Marvel is Disney. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, but lately, you know I mean, just like yes, that's how good they are. At exactly. This, right? They 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 are. They don't make bombs. They make hits. Hits after hits after hits. Um, but. Lately, both brands have suffered through some some big time disappointments. Pixar had record low openings for their last two movies, Lightyear and Elemental. Lightyear only made fifty one million opening weekend, en route to one hundred eighteen million total domestic. Uh, Elemental opened under thirty million, twenty nine and a half million domestic. That's Furiosa numbers. Uh, by That's far the so worst, crazy. the worst opening in Pixar history. Um, uh, and it did look. It did eventually recover, and it ended up making like five hundred million globally. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Um, but this is Pixar. Uh, right. They aren't. They aren't used to any bad news right. at the box office, much less an opening weekend under thirty. A Pixar opening weekend under thirty was crazy. Um, so, what was the reason for this slump? Before we get to the resurgence, the reason for the slump is was pretty clear. First, Lightyear and Elemental were just kind of bad, uh, not even bad ideas, just sort of like formless ideas. They didn't have that real, just powerful punch of a Pixar movie, that sort of potential to become a cultural phenomenon. Um, they both felt just kind of overcooked. Lightyear, because Lightyear, even though it's part of the, this very, the, one of their most successful franchises, Toy Story, um, didn't bear any resemblance to the things that people like about Toy Story. It was like the, the story of the real person that the Buzz Lightyear toy was made. What are you guys doing? Hat on a hat. <laughs> yeah, Just want yeah. too much. Silly. You know, like the Toy Story movies work because they're all the gags are about them being toys. Right. Um, so that was that was obviously a miss. And then Elemental is just was just sort of an inside out ripoff. I know. Um, right. but with more generic characters and then this bizarre reliance on on ancient science of the four elements is so these are both like just <laughs> Elemental truly feels like the last Pixar idea. It feels like yeah. if you you had all the Pixar writers write a hundred ideas, this would be the lowest ranking, most undercooked idea you could come up with. Remember the four elements? What if they were characters? It doesn't in even a movie? feel like a Pixar, like a real Pixar movie. It, it really cheapened the whole brand, both those movies you talked about. It doesn't. And the other big reason uh, for the slump is is streaming. Disney, uh, Disney Plus has been very aggressive in its distribution strategy. Lightyear was on Disney Plus six weeks after it premiered in theaters. Elemental was on Plus within three months of its theatrical release. Um, and so there wasn't a whole lot of urgency to see these these movies in theaters either. And, and that's just Pixar. Disney, Jesus, D Disney... Uh, in 2002, their big movie was Strange World with Jake Gyllenhaal and Dennis Quaid. You remember Strange World, right? We all love Strange World. Crazy. That cost Disney reportedly $200 million. They lost $200 million on Strange World. And then in 2023, Wish... Wish failed a Disney animated movie, did not hit 20 million in its opening weekend, and it was a holiday weekend. It was Thanksgiving weekend. It did not hit 20 million. So Pixar and Disney were desperately in need of a hit. So what do they do? They make the safest bet that you can possibly make. They go back through the old catalog. They take one of their old hits. Inside the first Inside Out was a huge uh, box office uh, hit. It was. It also won the Academy Award for Best Animated Movie, and they remake it with this basically the same plot and the same characters. And lo and behold, it worked. It worked. What are the two biggest animated openings of all time now? Incredibles two and Inside Out two. And in terms of uh, streaming. 
they they've recalibrated their whole streaming strategy. They haven't announced a streaming date for Inside Out 2 yet, but they did announce a spin-off series coming to Disney Plus early next year. Wow, guys. Smart. Good idea. That's what I would do. <laughs> Good idea yeah. that you should have thought of a long time ago. So IP so, wins again. Uh, Pixar might Is that be, what you think it was? I think so. Because I think at the end of the day, it's like trusted IP. Trusted IP uh, repackaged in basically the same form with a couple little additions. Was there any sort of like marketing thing they did special? Like... I'm just trying. I'm looking yeah. for other reasons because it was it wasn't even 75 million, which we'd both be like, "Whoa, 75 million! Oh, it's yeah. 155." Like, is it just? Is it just? It's a trusted yep. IP that people yep. liked Inside Out one. Here comes Inside Out two. It's and summer. because ironically, we're because going. they were so, I think pe- because people were so starved for a Pixar hit. Yeah. Uh, because the lab, I think I think their bombs actually help them because Pixar and Disney are lucky in that they are operating in a essential genre. Like our culture needs animated movies. It needs good children's animated movies. Of course. And they were failing to provide that, thus in a way creating the uh, demand that they, 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 that they then supplied with Inside Out 2. Um, but I do think I do think Pixar is at a, at a big like creative crisis right now. I think they are creatively bankrupt. I don't think we're getting uh, another Ratatouille or Coco anytime soon, unless we literally get Ratatouille 2 or Coco 2. Uh, don't you fucking dare do a Ratatouille sequel by the way what if you're remy is dead uh, remy's uh brother it's perfect what if they cast, cast you as remy's Dude, brother i will burn that fucking animation building to the ground oh they'll goodness. have to they'll have to close down the 134 Dude, you, love you don't want to watch it i love it next? that's why i don't i don't want, but it's perfect it's perfect they're not going to make a maybe Rata, we could do young Rata remy Tui. young remy did you this is not uh, this isn't what i think is happening but i just need to talk about it on the movie podcast have you heard this like strain of conversation that happened that was percolating before Inside Out 2 dropped where Disney and Bob Iger and everyone put their big heads together yep. and they decided that we can't have woke shit in our movies anymore and Inside Out 2's whole marketing thrust was we're going to do broad again everybody don't worry there's no gay characters there's no uh, you know, uh, people with purple hair. We're just gonna do uh, like that. Was like part of the marketing of this movie. Maybe just in right wing circles, which I don't swim in, but I am. I have a Twitter, so you know, it's always there. I, and have you heard yeah, this strain of conversation? I, I heard, but I don't it's, think. I, I of course I don't think that. No, no, no. no. The, everybody got the message. This movie's not woke, and they went. But this whole entire. The fact that Bob Iger himself was saying something along the lines of, you guys are right, we should de-woke our movies, or what you know, whatever the parlance is, is crazy that they think that, you know, because Turning Red flopped, because it focuses on an Asian protagonist, is, is I hope it's not true. I hope it's just, you know, chatter, PR... I think it is. I, 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 th- I think seems, I think it all seems that crazy stuff, to me. I don't think that. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's that's still how. I don't think that's how people think. I don't think that's why they go to the movies. I don't think they they really take it into consideration. There's no way, right? Because also because Inside Two is not an uh, anti woke movie. I mean, it's full of therapy speak. It's all female characters. The the, no, the, I, 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 the characters right. are diverse. Uh, there's. I mean, people were reading queer themes into the into the movie. Uh, they're not explicit, but I but I think you can certainly read them into it. Um, it is by no means an yeah. anti woke movie. Movie. I think what Bob Iger meant, and I think all of this just comes down to marketing and like the narratives around the movies, because this stuff is always, you know, this stuff rarely has to do with the movie itself. It's just like, I think mm-hmm. he was basically, I think that was his message to like avoid, avoid becoming a right wing talking point. And the thing is, and, you, and the thing is, you can still make whatever movies you want to make, but if you, if you sort of, again, if you, if you do whatever you have to do, if you middle America up the marketing strategy, then it just doesn't become a talking point, and then you don't have to worry about the backlash, this and that. Here's some other things that Iger and um, Pixar president Jim Morris said recently that I think also inform the direction they're going in. Uh, last year, Iger said, we are focusing heavily on the core brands and franchises that fuel all of our businesses and reducing output overall to enable us to concentrate on fewer projects and improve quality. 
while continuing our effort around the creation of fresh and compelling original IP. That's literally what that, we did at Forever Dog. Yes, that was like that was a and, and the, the original IP is clearly like a throw throw in to keep you know to keep all the creatives happy. <laughs> That's exactly. The, right. the, the main focus is on core brands and yeah. franchises, a, aka IP sequels, etc. Um, and it worked. You look Inside Out to 155 million opening weekend. Bob Iger can finally add that. Uh, a brick pizza oven to his mega yacht that he's had his eye on for a while. So everything is right in the world. Um, and and I also want to say th- this is very interesting too. Pixar president Jim Morris um, also recently said in Bloomberg um, that for Pixar that that whole strategy literally amounts to three movies every two years, with every other film being either a sequel or a spinoff. Um, and then in terms of streaming, he said the studio is returning to its theatrical first model while simultaneously developing separate series based on existing IP for Disney+, Plus, which is exactly what we're seeing with Inside Out 2. And uh, they're probably going to going to stay the course because Inside Out 2 is their biggest hit in years in years. I'd make another not, one. Not made by Marvel. Yeah. yeah. 